To obey is better than sacrifice. What's given a tithe of? Sometimes it's a sacrifice. So to obey is even better than my sacrifice, which means God will bless me even more so. So we have to understand, it's all his anyway, because what if I couldn't get out of bed to come to work? Then I get no paycheck. What if I have no air in my lungs? Then I can't earn a paycheck. So it's all his. That alone is reason to praise. Amen. We're glad you're joining us online. We're excited to have you with us tonight. Now, before you get too excited, this is black. Last week was blue. Okay. I, had, I came in the same shirt tonight. I'm going to tell on myself. I wore the same exact shirt. Now, now, last week was blue, and I got in the car in a blue shirt, thinking it was black. And I showed up here to church, and I looked at the tape from last week, because the Holy Spirit said, I think you wore that last week. I said, are you serious? I get on there, sure enough. Anna, have you left the house? How many of you know we all do, do things and think things? Like, I thought that was blue. I thought that was black. Whatever, who cares? It got washed before last Tuesday, Wednesday. So, you know, anyway, you, there's always somebody going to say, PT, I saw you wore that shirt. You did see that. Thank you, sir. That's it. There's nobody around me to tell me it doesn't. <laughs> well, we're going to start tonight. Faith, praise, faith. Position. Faith's position. Now, I don't know what page that will be on for you. Someone want to help us out with that? 97. 97. And we are on week 10, chapter 5, part 2. And we are within two weeks of ending our series. Again, our new book study will begin on the 28th. And we're excited about that. And again, the cutoff for those of you online watching us, we've moved that cutoff date to this Sunday, the 11th. We need to have your name on a sign-up sheet if you'd like a book. And they're $12 uh, for the book. Okay, well, Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, as always, we thank you that you lead us. Holy Spirit, we open our hearts. We thank you for helping us to have receptive minds. And that we're focused, as we said earlier, on what we're here to do tonight. Father, I thank you for your presence sweeping through this place and for doors being unlocked, for chains falling off, for answers being revealed. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We all said, Amen. 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 Well, instead of praying over and over again about the same petition, get in faith. And what's that say? Amen. But how? By praising God for your answers before you see your answer. Act like God has already heard you. Because the Bible says he does hear you when you pray according to his will. Now this may be some of our clue here. Why aren't my prayers being answered? Am I praying according to his will? Or am I praying my will wanting his stamp? of approval because he won't do that he just won't do that he's not going to grant us things that aren't a part of his will for our life and so it's important that we understand well if I'm going to ask for things then I need to ask for things within his will Well, what's a part of his will peace provision finances healing right all those things are a part of his will but for me to win the lottery, I don't know if that's a part of his will for my life. Okay, nothing against playing the go for it. I don't look at that as any people spend how much money going to the movie theater. I mean, I if you're gonna buy whatever. But my point in that is this: to understand that God, I want to pray your will in my life, not my will for my life, and expect you to grant that for me. And then when you don't, then I'm mad because you don't answer my prayers. Did I pray according to his will? God wants us to praise, not because he needs it for himself, but because he's trying to get us in a position of faith so he can answer our prayer. 
Faith is praising God for the answers before we see it. We know that. We've talked about that numerous times. After praise comes increase, abundance, and the blessings of God running after us and overtaking us in life. The key to faith is praising God before you see your answer. Praise acknowledges that God has heard you and that he is busy answering your prayer. Underline this. Praise is actively trusting in God. Now, what is actively? Continuous. Continuous. Yeah, that's exactly right. Consistent. Continual. How many of you struggle with consistency? Being consistent in your day to day. That's not uncommon. It happens. And, and, and sometimes I think it's more geared towards personalities and how we're wired as people. If you put an A-type personality like me next to a creative personality, we're going to operate far differently. It's just how we're wired. It doesn't mean one's right or wrong. But to understand that in that, that I'm actively trusting in God, that means I'm consistently, purposefully, intentionally doing what? Praising Him. When? Before I have it. Not getting distracted by what? What I don't see. Because I'm convinced in my heart that even though I may not see it here yet, I've already seen it in here. There's, there, I've seen it. If we see it here, we'll have it out here. But it's got to be in here first. We've got to have that revelation. It goes on to say this. The, Bi the Bible promises that whoever trusts in God will not be ashamed. We won't be ashamed if we trust in God and stand our ground in faith praising God because we will have our answer. There's power in praise. The power of God is released to the believer in praise, but to be effective. Praise must come from the heart and be a... Ooh. Not just a mechanical gimmick used as a means of escape when we get into trouble. That's not true praise. True praise flows out of a loving relationship with our Heavenly Father. We praise God because we love and trust Him, not because we're trying to manipulate Him to do something for us. Let's take a look tonight at some scripture here. Now, Pastor covered this not too long ago about the lepers, and we're going to take a look at Luke 17, starting in verse 11 tonight. As Jesus continued on uh, towards Jerusalem, He reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance. They were crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go show yourself to the priest. Now that's important. Let's stop there for just a minute. He didn't look at them and say, be healed. He didn't look at them and say, be made well. He gave him something to do. Well, let's see how your faith is. Why don't you go over and talk to the priest? As they went, they were cleansed. Not when they got there. As they went. Obedience. Faith. You said go talk to the priest. I don't get how this ties together for my healing. But I'll do it. Well, go show yourself. Go show yourself to them. Just, just show them. By the time you get there, you'll be healed. Okay. And they were. All ten of them. That's amazing. They were cleansed of their leprosy. In verse 15. One of them. One of them. When he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God. One of them. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, didn't I heal 10 men? <laughs> I love Jesus. Don't you? Aren't we a few short? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? That almost implies, now we'd have to study that out, but that almost implies that at least some of the other 10 weren't foreigners. That they weren't Samaritans. And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Now, a few years ago, I got into a discussion with someone. 
about this very scripture passage. And their, their position was that healing comes into our life because of someone else's faith for us. Your faith. Now, I will say this. When there are instances when a person cannot release their faith and we're standing in the gap for them, that's different. Your faith has made you well. See, it's not someone else's faith in our life. It's not someone else's desire for us to achieve these great things spiritually. It's not someone else's prayer for us every day that's going to get it done for us. It's our desire to get it done. It's our desire, and I'm not discounting. We need people praying for us. Believe me, pray all you can for everybody. Always pray without ceasing, Scripture says. But the truth is, is someone else's walk with God isn't going to get you where you want to go. Someone else's walk with God is going to get them where they need to go. And it's going to leave us right where we're at. In comparison, which is a trap of the enemy. Why don't I have, Pastor said it, why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Why don't I have these giftings? Why don't I have this? And I think sometimes, even for me, the Holy Spirit has revealed some things to me very recently that, you know what? You can't want someone's eternity more than they want. What? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is able to do all things. And if he's not allowed, how am I going to do anything? Meaning if a person's rejecting the Holy Spirit, maybe not actively, maybe not intentionally, oh no, Holy Spirit, I know that's you, stay away. No, I'm not, I don't think anybody does that. <sighs> to do that would be very dangerous, and very foolish. But I think within ourselves we do that. No, don't come talking to me about stuff in my heart that isn't right in my life. I don't want to hear that. I'll deal with it at another time. Hopefully you have that time to deal with it. But see, me wanting that for you isn't going to get it for you. And then what happens? Have you ever been there before where you wanted something for someone and you want to see them and, and, and out of them not responding, you grew more frustrated with them? And more offended. And then what happens? Now we're in sin. Now we're in sin. So what's easier? You know what, Lord, I thank you. I'll, I'll release my faith with anybody, but I thank you that they, they learn to release their faith for themselves. I thank you that if I teach a man to fish, right? But you got to want to learn. Ah, somebody else will do it. Guess what? What if the person next to us is saying that same thing? The person next to us, who's going to do it? So we have to understand it's our faith, and in our, in our faith, when we release our faith, then we have to act as if it's done. I'm not going back to that. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm just going to thank God. Every time that comes to my mind, I'm going to thank Him that I have that answer. For instance, let's just use this as an example. I need finances. I'm not going to say every time I turn around, man, I need some money. Money's tight. There's not enough money. What I'm going to start saying is, thank you, Lord, there's more than enough money in this home to pay every bill and have plenty left over. Thank you that I never speak another word other than that because you are my provision. I'm not even going to worry about it or think about it. If it shows up in the mail or happens when I get home, the air's not working, whatever it may be, you got it. If it's a heat pump, you got it, Lord, to get to that place. And it's not someone else's faith, it's ours. We believe that. We speak that. That's our life. We're living that because that's who we are. It's not something we do on Wednesday and Sunday and we come and raise our hands and praise and sing and the rest of the week we curse God and dig up our seed. See, praise is a lifestyle and it's something that Every day, these lepers, you know, they experienced this healing. But how many came back to praise? How many were thankful? One. 
Do you think the other nine saw the one stop and go the other direction? Somebody had to see that. Where is he going? I don't know. Let's go. We got to go to the priest. But you forgot. Did you even look at yourself? You already did. Have you thanked the person who did that for you? And sometimes I think we get so overwhelmed with what we're facing that we can't give glory to God and we can't praise God because all we see is the mountain in front of us. And all God wants us to do is look at him. And that mountain will disappear. He goes on to say in verse 18, She's getting it back there. As no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner in verse 19. Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you again. Your faith has healed you. Ten lepers cried out to Jesus for cleansing. When you study Bible types, you find that apart from being an actual disease, leprosy is also a type of sin. Anybody know that? In reality, these ten lepers were healed of a literal physical disease. But we can also say that anyone who has sin in his life is in need of cleansing by the blood of Jesus. All ten lepers cried out for Jesus' cleansing. But only one of the ten returned to give thanks and Jesus commended him for it. In fact, Jesus indicated that this leper's praise and thanksgiving had something to do with his faith making him whole. In other words, verse 14 says, all of the lepers were cleansed, but only one was made whole. Completely whole. And he was made whole after he spent some time in thanksgiving. That's interesting, isn't it? The ten were cleansed on their way. The one came back, thanks God. Now he's not only cleansed, he's made completely whole. Who knows what else that means in his life. He may have had other infirmities <clears throat> or ailments. Let's look at Psalm 103, verse 1 to 9. A Psalm of David. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I'll praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. Is that not reason enough to praise him every single day? We ought to all write that down. I'm going to write that down and put that on my wall. We ought to all do that. Psalm 103, 1 through 4. And we ought to say that every single day. To praise the Lord with all that we are. Why? Because he has provided uh, forgiveness for our sin. He, he doesn't remember our sin, he forgives it and heals our diseases and he's redeemed us from death and hell. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's enough. Not going to hell's enough. Amen. If I never had another thing in my life, I lived in a cardboard shack by a railroad track in rainy weather one day and a blizzard the next. Having him is enough if I know who I have. If I don't know who I have, then nothing's ever enough. And he'll never be enough. We got to know who we have. Again, he measured the waters of the entire universe and held them in the palm of his hand. The depths in one hand. And he doesn't know what to do. He can't provide that money. He can't provide that healing that he said he's already provided. Who do we think we are? We're not the creator. We're created. We forget that. Well, bless God, such and such and so and so and this and that. Lord, thank you for your healing mercies, your tender <laughs> mercies that they're new every morning. Thank you that you've healed me from sickness and disease, that, Lord, you've given me a way out of hell and provided a way to be with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. The rest of my life, that's enough. On top of it, you gave me the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To not just give me through, to give me power to get through. To give me wisdom to get through. To take me miles and minutes. Hallelujah. 
I don't want to slow track it. There'll be times for that. There'll be times the Lord says, time to go to, through this season. We've got to slow things down here. There's some things we've got to... There are going to be seasons where the, he's the God of the suddenlies. And what has been waited for and prayed for and believed for for weeks and months and years happens suddenly. Amen. 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 Ask Ruth about suddenly. Her life changed suddenly, overnight. And ours can too, but we have to believe him. We have to take him at his word and thank him. There's nothing that we don't, there's no reason we have to not praise him. I said it last week. I hope some of you did that. How many of you wrote some things down, reasons to praise him? I hope you did that. There's plenty of reasons. If you're, oh, my life is just such a stinking mess. Blah, 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 second freaking, wrecking, wrecking. Thank you, Lord, I have breath. Thank you, Lord, I can see. I tell you what, you start doing that, that'll rise up in you. And you'll stop complaining. And you'll start praising and start thanking. And you may even get hooping and hollering and getting excited in your spirit to understand God's given us all that we need. All he wants us to do is praise him and thank him for it. But we put so many things in between that. Well, I got to do this and this and talk to this person and do that. And I don't know about if he wanted this or that. So I'm going to interpret it my way. And then at the end, I hope I get what he said. I don't want that. I want if it says, put this in this box and put this in this box and hit the button, you get this. I want that. That's what I want. Easy button. Jesus did the hard work for us. He did it for us. If, you, if we think about all we got to do is praise him when we wake up, praise him as we go through our day, Tell him what, what is on our mind, which he already knows. Release our faith and thank him for the things that we're believing him for. Praise him when we go to bed. Study his word. Get to know who he is. Why is that such a bad gig? How is that such a hard thing to do? But the devil makes it so difficult because our flesh just doesn't want to do that. Why? Because it's life. The devil wants us to die in bondage. To be bound up and not even know it. To be that lobster. Well, it's getting warm in here. You're in a boiling pot of water. Next thing you know, you're on a plate. And it's too late. I'm talking about eternity here. I'm talking about thinking right. In our right mind. Anybody tell you, you're not in your right mind. They were probably right. Because when somebody has told me that, I was in the flesh. I was, I was freaking out. You're out of your mind. Say that to someone who's already upset. See how that goes. <laughs> Not very well. I, I just, I, I can't. Express it enough. I mean, we could have stopped on that scripture verse there in Psalm 103, 1 through 4. Let's look at that again. We're going to end on that tonight. I'm telling you what. We, thank you, Father God. We need to write this down. We need to, we need to put this in front of us. Do this for a week to see if things don't change. I'm going to do it. You can do it if you want. I hope that you will. He redeems me from death. And crowns me with love and tender mercies. Mm. Let's look at five. Is there five in there? Seven. Or no, go, go back to three. What do we start at? One? Yeah, let's go to one. <clears throat> but all that I am, not some, with my whole heart, not some, I'll praise his holy name. Two, let all that I am praise the Lord. Man, never forget the good things that he does for me. Doesn't say bad things. Bad devil. Good God. We taught that in kids' church for years. It's really that simple. If it's bad, it's not from God. If it's good, it's from God. Devil trying to make you think the bad was God and the good was his. you got to know the difference. He forgives all my sins and heals all 
my diseases. And most importantly, think about this. The sins part, yes, but even if we had disease until we die, look at, at verse 4. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. We may have ailments that we have in our body that we take to the grave with us. He redeems us from death. We're not taking this body with us. We're not taking our stuff with us. I've officiated enough funerals to tell you I have never seen a trailer hitch on a hearse. Not one time. Never. The only thing we can take to heaven with us is what? Souls. To help people just like us get up out of the same things that we were in and to help them see that we serve a good God who loves them and has a plan for their life, plans to prosper them and not to harm them, to give them the future that they hope for. That should be our goal. And that comes from my praise and my exhortation and my intimacy with him. And that takes place when I'm consistent. Consistency is, it'll make you or break you. Meaning, lack of will break you. Consistency even when you don't feel like it. Even when you're too tired. Even when, you know, I heard someone, I think it was, Phil was telling me that Tanner, you know, when he exercises, you just do it. You just do it. Like, it, it doesn't matter how you feel. And, and, and I shared a little bit about that, I think, as well. Maybe not with you. Maybe it was with staff. But there's things in my life that I feel the same way about. You just have to do it. It's just, you have to just put it in your day. This is something I have to do until it becomes a part of your day. And, and those things become habits, but they have to be forced. Because we find enough time to do any and everything else. So why is it that we struggle finding time when it comes to our eternity? See, we invest money here on earth, and we, we can't take that with us. Now, that's smart to do. And we should be doing that. And we should be wise with our finances. But why are we investing in things like TV and in the temporary things? They're, they're, I, and I like all of it too. I'm, not, I'm talking about balance here, but consistency is key. You know, when, when I work out, and I don't work out like Tanner works out, but when I do work out, I, I was doing it seven days a week, and it was too much. It just became too much. My body needed time to rest. But I did that for couple years and, and, and it was a it I grew into every day I started Monday Wednesday Friday and I'm like well, I'm gonna do Monday Tuesday Wednesday and and it now every day I woke up especially in the winter when it's cold it's dark out and I'm getting up and I'm starting to work out Ugh. Ugh, I don't want to do this but it's gotten to the point, and I, I, I just say this for a point of example, it's gotten to the point for me, now I, 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 it's Monday through Friday, and, and then when summer starts and mowing starts here, then, then I, well, I'm going to take Thursday. Now, I'm not gonna, that's my workout. I'll call that my workout. But how many of you know when you've done something for a long time in your heart, it just, you know, Thursday comes and it's like, it's workout time. No, it's not. It's mowing. It's workout time. Ah. Oh. And I try to give myself a pass. I can't do it. I feel terrible. So, ah, I mean, ah, ah. But you know what? If I can't do it there, I can't do it here. You've got to start somewhere. So, uh, you know, maybe it, it's a big bite for us to do this Psalm 103, 1 through 4, take the bite. Take the bite. Let's start somewhere and put that money and begin to just praise God when you wake up. Praise Him in the afternoon when you're having your lunchtime. You know, you want a balanced diet. I'll offer a balanced diet. I've, I've said this before. 
You know, take some time in the morning to read a proverb. That's wisdom. Start your day. Some wisdom. Lord, help me. If you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. If you don't do this, this will happen. Then at noon or lunchtime or whenever you, you know, have a break, take a minute and start in Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, any of them. Any of the New Testament, John, Romans, Acts, Book of Acts, especially early church forming right now where we're at as a body. Great place to be. And then at nighttime, when you get ready to settle down and, 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 and rest your head, thank the Lord, read a psalm. And praise the Lord for your day and the day coming up the next morning. You know, it doesn't have to be three chapters. We were talking about read one. Read one verse stands out. Stop right there. Chew on that verse till it gets in you. Amen. It's not about quantity. Quality. I'd rather read one thing and that, man, that did something in my heart. That's, that stood out to me. I'm going to think about that this week. I'm going to put that in front of me and I'm just going to meditate on that. And it's really that simple. But we have to be thinking that way. Sometimes that means put this down, turn the radio off, turn the stereo off, the car stereo, turn, tell the kids to go out and play. Not my kids, they're too old for that now. But. <laughs> you know, to get that time where, you know what, Lord, I have to have this. This is a part of my day, I can't miss it. Schedule it, put it in your calendar. It's awful hard when we're, saying things publicly and putting it out there, it's awful hard once we've made ourselves accountable to not do it. So make yourself accountable. I'll make myself, I'm making myself accountable with you. You know, we're all in this together. I know we're missing quite a few tonight. Uh, and we have a prayer request here at the end that we're going to cover, but I'd like to open it up for a minute and have a few minutes just of discussion here. Before we close tonight, do I have anybody who'd like to share something with us tonight? I would. Yeah, go ahead. Good, Rob. So a couple things um, as you're talking. Lots of times as you're talking, especially on Wednesday nights, I have like these neon signs start flashing up in my head that say, remember to say this. Yeah. Um, comparison is the thief of joy. I don't remember who said that or where I read that from or where I heard that from, but yeah. that is one of the most accurate statements I, I've ever heard. Um, one thing that I learned, as most of you know, as I've shared, that I've had a tendency to be a bit of a hard head, and things take me a long time to learn, but one thing that didn't was to be happy for other people. Celebrate the successes of others. It makes a difference in your life. It will make a huge difference in your life. Yeah. If you view it as... You know, wow, this person got this because God did this for them. Well, if he'll, he'll do that for them, then whatever it is that I mean, it might not be the same thing, yeah. but whatever it is, you know, they're really good at that. Whatever it is that he wants me to do, that should lead me to believe that I'm going to be really good at whatever, it, wherever he puts me, as long as I'm following the plan. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so to just learn to be happy for others. It, it, it really, it, it, would, it will increase your joy a hundred times. Yeah. Just being able to be happy for when good things happen to other people. And I think, um, I think people struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that that part in that verse where it talks about healing our sicknesses, um, speaking from personal experience, you better be ready to stop doing something that's causing that sickness. Amen. Um, Amen. Because lots of times the sickness is brought on by your own bad habits. Mm -hmm. And until that changes, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, you got to do you got to do your part, too. At least it was that way in my circumstance. Yeah. I know not everyone is the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just those things kind of popped in my head to share. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Brother 